hi, my name is Dan. Um, this video is uh, one in a, a short series of videos that uh, give an introduction to the Unreal Engine, particularly to level editing. And uh, this one, I'm uh, in this one, I'm going to talk about geometry objects. Uh, I'm going to talk about what they are, why they're different from static meshes, um, and some of the good use that you can put them to. Uh, so uh let's crack into that then so um if you've seen my other videos earlier in the series or you may just know this stuff anyway if you create um if you use the shapes over here on the left hand side uh you can create some basic shapes uh as well as using static meshes from the content uh area so that's a cube fairly straightforward and you may have noticed this other tab here which is uh, geometry which also has a box. It calls it a box, not a cube. That's interesting. Um, there are reasons for it. And it gives you a bigger one. And uh, this, interestingly, has given it in a purple texture, which is, I'm not quite sure um, why it selected that material right now. Um, so I'm going to delete that. So what's different? What's different between those? Uh, um, I want it to be... Do I want it to be untextured? I don't really care. Um, so if I select a, a material, I thought it was going to use the material that was selected. But that's given me... Yes, that has. That's used that um, polished marble uh, material on this box. Um, and uh, when we look at the details over on the uh, on this side here, um, let's zoom in. Um we can see that uh, it's got the normal kind of transform, but it's got this area that's uh, brush settings. And we're gonna uh, play with some of those um, in times to come. Uh, we can do uh, fairly normal things with location, rotation, and scale, but the scale um, is possibly one of the most interesting here because we also have these brush settings, which give us a size X, Y, and Z, and they are subtly different from scale. Um, and I will um, show those, uh, let's zoom out, uh, to do with texturing in a little bit. Just for now, I'm going to stretch it out a little bit so I can change the size, the shape of this. This is stuff that you can do, obviously, with, oh, I'm just moving it, um, that you can obviously do with uh, the scale for a static mesh. Um, well, the difference between... Um, a geometry brush and a static mesh is that uh, what it creates isn't described inside the computer in terms of triangles like a static mesh is. It's described in terms of parameters of <coughs> um, where things are and how they're connected and it generates a set of points and, and then connects them together. Let's demonstrate that with a cylinder. So um, here we've got a cylinder. Actually, it's not very cylindrical. Um, it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It's actually an octagon at the moment. Um, and this is because uh, down here, we've told it to have eight sides. I'm going to zoom in on that. Uh, but if we wanted um, more detailed, let's put that up to 200. And that looks more like a cylinder. We've, we've made a 200-sided uh, object. We could bring that... Uh, down let's say 30 <coughs> and that be that might be near enough an approximation uh, to a cylinder as we want and the difference is that um with a uh oh go away stupid thing sorry about that um zoom back out with a static mesh you can't do that you can't change the number of sides something has you can't change the uh, the level of detail on it and um the reason you can do it with a geometry brush is because it's actually generating that uh, on the fly uh, from the information of what the shape should be, um, which is uh, similar for the curved stairs. So let's have a look at what we can actually have in here. We've got a materials transform geometry. So we've got advanced geometry materials. Um, I'm just doing this on the fly. I thought I could add some stairs and change the number of stairs. And here we are, brush settings. Inner radius, uh, step width, step height, 
number of steps. So let's change this to 20 steps. And it's, um, it's made it taller with more steps. Um, let's uh, change the step width. It's 200 at the moment. Let's go to 400. So that makes it wider. Let's change the... Um, uh, what else have we got? Let's just change that to that. I'll talk about that later. What I want to do is to make it go round more. Um, step height and step width. Angle of curve, 90. That's what I want. There, and I've made it go around. It's like 270 now. It's nearly 270, 274. Um, and because it's, uh, as I said, because it's not a static mesh, uh, because it's generating the shape from the parameters that have been given in the brush settings, we can do all sorts of manipulation with it like that. Um, so that's what a geometry is. Uh, there's something else that's somewhat interesting about a geometry uh, object, or, uh, a brush object. So we've, um, when I created this, I had a particular material highlighted. But if I bring another material and drag it onto one of the surfaces, it will retexture each surface individually. Uh, so let's just have a good think about that every time. Let's go. Well, let's have a, a metal on there. Right. So we can see that uh, if you want objects that are, I don't like the look of that one. Uh, that's better. If you want an object that's got different texture on textures or different materials and different sides, uh, geometry is one way of doing it. Um, there is also a um, an advantage to using uh, geometry brushes uh, when it comes to texturing. So uh, this is a static mesh. I'm just going to move it away from the other objects. So here's a static mesh that I have previously uh, created, which is just a 400 by 200 wall, as you can see from the details over there. And I have stuck this uh, pebbles uh, material on it. So what's it called? Cobblestone pebbles. So I'm going to find that in my... Um, uh, hopefully. There it is, cobblestone pebbles. Uh and I'm going to replicate this um, on a brush in a minute, a geometry brush. I want to show you the problem that I'm I'm addressing here, which is if I take this object and I stretch it, and the way to stretch it, this is a, this is a static mesh, the way to stretch a static mesh is to scale it. And I'm going to scale this up to roughly double the length. As you can see, as I'm stretching it, the texture stretches with it. Uh, so it starts to look unrealistic for certain types of texture. Um, and this is a, um, a common problem. It's a perpetual thing. So in a lot of objects, you want it to be mapping properly. Um, for something like a wall, you might want to stretch it and then it starts to look weird. Um, or you might want to uh, you know, scale the whole thing up or down, but keep the, um, the, the material at the same sort of size. Um, and there are ways of doing this, uh, changing the scale of the material inside the material, but they're relatively complex, and you need to understand what you're doing with materials to be able to do that. Um, however, uh, let's show you it on a brush. So I'm going to start so uh, with a box, um, because that's how you need to start. And then uh, I'm going to... Uh, actually, I'm going to stop doing that and highlight that on do that so that I've got my cobblestone box here. Now, if I change this by doing scale, I'm going to do an X scale and sort of multiply this by two. Once again, it does the stretching thing. Let's do it by four. <laughs> okay, not pretty. But if I do it by changing the brush settings, so if I change X from 200 to 1,000, it tiles the material for me so that it stays in the, in the right proportion. And to get something that uh, we're wanting to achieve, like that wall, we might want to be shrinking the Y down to 10, so we've got a nice thin thing. And again, that's not 
done crazy things with the material that so this is one advantage to using um uh, to using geometry brushes over over static meshes there are downsides uh, so the first one really is that it's not so easy to get complex shapes when you've got a uh, a geometry brush um and the other one is that actually a geometry brush is more uh, computationally expensive uh, for the computer because it actually got to work out the shape as well as draw it uh, on the fly as time goes on uh, so if you use a lot of geometry brushes it's one of the reasons why you might get slowed down even in small projects um, and in the next video after this one I'll show you how to go through the process it's actually pretty simple of changing something you've created as a geometry brush into a static mesh to get that speed advantage um so i've done stuff about texture and there's other stuff that you can do with geometry brushes though that make them even more powerful um and in order to, dem uh, to demonstrate this i'm gonna uh, bring in another brush here which is um i'm gonna use a, a cylinder i'm gonna change its outer radius to uh, what shall i make it 150 I'm going to change the number of sides to uh, let's have 50 that's reasonable i'm going to uh rotate it around the or around the x-axis i think is what i want to do so let's get it to uh, stick in a number here 90. so i want to get it onto its uh side yeah i think i probably want it smaller than this so i'm going to do outer radius um uh, uh 80. There we go. That's quite small. Um, you'll see why I'm doing this in a minute. I'm going to intersect that with the other brush and then bring it kind of down towards ground level. And then I'm going to go into these brush settings down here. And um, there's one here which is brush type. And by default, a brush type is additive, but I'm going to change it to subtractive. And you might have seen this coming. But what it's done is it's made this um, it's made this particular brush make holes instead of being a solid object. And uh, let's zoom back out again. Uh, so when I deselect that, we actually get a nice kind of shape with a hole in it. And uh, you can do all sorts of complex things uh, with these if you once you know what you're doing. I'm just going to quickly play in this and i'm waiting for it to actually respond to me play this level come on there we go and it's just being a bit slow today in my computer tell me something about uh texture streaming pool and that's because of something i did earlier now ah oh, i can't quite get through there because i'm too big so um i'm gonna I should be able to get through that hole if, if the hole's big enough. Kind of try and select that uh, cylinder wherever it is. Cylinder brush, not that one, that one. I'm going to change its um, outer radius again just to demonstrate this. I'm going to change it to 120, make it a bit bigger. Um, and then play again. I'm sure you trust me and you realize that this is what would actually happen. But uh, so geometry brushes by default have um, collision detection on them and but this hole lets me go through and it's quite cute okay so the last thing i'm going to show you uh in this video is a little bit about what, what if you want a different shape um so normally you'd expect you'd need to get into some uh, 3d modeling software and create a mesh uh to import but it is possible to actually edit uh, geometry brushes so I've just created a box here and I'm going to go into the geometry uh, edit editing mode which is so if we go up in the top left up here we've got um, this mode drop down and we've been in selection mode all the way through uh, but there's a brush editing mode down here and that gives us a whole lot of extra tools that we can use so when you're in brush editing mode you can select elements of this brush or of this object here um, so you can select a surface, you can select a line, you're going to get kind of fairly accurate to so select a line, uh, or select a point, and it's got those little squares on the points which help. 
Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the shape of this into just into quite a simple uh, shape change. Uh, so I've selected this uh, this edge here, and I'm going to use the split tool, uh, which is going to uh, give us extra vertices, extra points here that we can use. So this is creating extra lines around the middle of this box. Um, and the reason for that is because I want the shape to change halfway up. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select these uh, points, uh, technical term vertices, vertex is the singular. So I've just used a control whilst I clicked to select more than one. And one of the um, things that is highlighted is weld here. So what weld will do is that it'll it will basically glue all these vertices together and make them one vertex. So it's going to move uh, some of them inwards, and it just does it to the first one that was to the position of the first one that was selected. So that looks a bit odd in terms of shape now, but I've also got that top vertex selected. Um, what I'm wanting to do is to make a kind of pointed shape. So I'm just dragging that um, around. And I'm just using my viewport to kind of guess roughly where it should be. And I can use Snap to Grid to help me on this, which it is doing, actually. Can I try and look at that from above? Does that look right? Mm, that's a bit too far that way still. That looks more central. There we go. And in not very long at all, oh, yes, I've actually gone too far. As you move around, you can see the shape. It's not taken me very long to create uh, a new shape. Uh, you're not really, it's not a good way of doing complex shapes, but if you want some simple shapes, this is quite a, a useful thing to do. Um, and if you select uh, one of the faces, for example, and you drag that, everything will just move in um, along with it, as it should do. Um, uh, now wondering what happens if I rotate that side. Not a lot, it would seem. No. Okay. Um, and then, uh, scale a scale of face. Oh, that does all sorts of freaky things. And it can insert, so that's had to insert some um, extra lines to give us more shapes as a, as a result of that stretching. So I've created a bit of a weird shape there through doing that. So that's uh, what geometry brushes, uh, brushes are. Uh, some of what you can do with them, uh, how to use them, how to do texture with them, how to use them to overcome the, uh, the tiling of materials, and how to do some simple editing of the shapes. So, that's it from me for now. <laughs>